Arts is made possible by viewers like you. Arts is presented by the Tobin Center for the Performing Arts, providing the best place anywhere to see and hear a live performance, transforming the performing arts in San Antonio's decade of downtown. The Tobin Center. On this edition of Arts, it's Fiesta time and we can't wait to check in with Urban 15 and see what they've got on tap for Fiesta. Las Casas Foundation sets the stage for talented high school students to pursue their theatrical dreams. And we sat down with Hector Gallant, the producer and director of the film Children of Giant, filmed in Marfa. All this and much, much more on this edition of Arts. Viva Fiesta! Hi, I'm Asia Sheravino and welcome to Arts. When you think of San Antonio's Fiesta, it's hard not to think of the amazing dance troupe Urban 15. We caught up with George Cisneros to find out what's in store for us this year. Well, we're experimenting with a whole new set of lights. We've expanded on what we've developed and we've evolved. We're now, now starting to experiment with new programming and new, and new kinds of ways to present light pictures. New sorts of levels of reflectivity, refraction, and lightweight. We have to make these things durable to last in the, a parade. So uh, the fabrication and the design, it's, it's really at a superior level than it's ever been. The hardest part of the design is stamina. It has to be durable. And so that's where Catherine's genius comes in. She makes these things that fit on people and they last a parade. Now inside of these things that she designs are the electronics. And Jonathan is our, our fabrication and, and soldering uh, technician who's put together things that can take stamina. You have to remember that things get wet and they short out. So they have had to come up with ways to keep and protect the electrics. We have a good team. They are the ones that are embedding the lights into the objects which then are incorporated into the final designs. For Urban 15, the parade starts in October. <laughs> but it, the parade itself has a, you might say a preamble, and that is our uh, incognito mask ball. So that's where we get our audience and our members moving in the annual official Mass Ball of Fiesta. And it takes place this year on the 18th of April, which is the Saturday before the parade. And that's, that's an event. Everybody can come as who they want to be. It's a mask ball and costume ball. And it's great music. It's great dancing. Uh, everybody gets in that carnival uh, fiesta spirit and carries us all the way in, the adrenaline carries all the way to the following Saturday. To learn more about Urban 15 and their many events outside of Fiesta, you can visit urban15.org or check out their Facebook page. We want to hear from you. Do you know of a good story you'd like to see aired on Arts? Let us know by emailing us at arts at klrn.org. If we use your idea, you'll get a screen credit on our program. The Las Casas Foundation is currently setting the stage for talented high school students to pursue their theatrical dreams. This is the seventh year Las Casas Foundation has hosted the scholarship competition designed to spotlight high school students who demonstrate talent in the performing arts. Our scholarship competition is unique within the entire United States. Uh, as far as we know, we're the only completely talent-based award competition. And by that, I mean that it's not need-based or grade-based or based on anything. It's just up to what the individual can bring to that performance and in front of these judges that we bring from all over the United States. You'll get to see 25 finalists and that started out as 150 applicants and they were they performed on the stage of the Empire um, before a group of qualified judges and different mediums so dance, acting and singing and then we got those 150 applicants down to the 25 finalists. Uh, once we get the 25 finalists selected, then we offer them a master class to prepare them for the finals. So it's not just to come in and 
apply and, and then you go directly to the finals. We look at ourselves as an educating um, foundation. And so we try to find all kinds of different ways to support these children and to educate them and to better them uh, through the process. The only stipulation of our program is that you have to be a Texas resident. We actually have kids coming from as far away as El Paso, all over Texas and the Houston area, the Panhandle. It's very exciting to see how it's not just a San Antonio issue now. You know, it's growing and growing. Last year was our first year to have a region for the Jimmy Awards. If you played the lead uh, in your high school musical this year, you're eligible to be to audition for us in that category. And if you get selected, we select one boy and one girl to go to New York, and it's all expense paid, and they get to work with Broadway professionals for a week. Uh, at the end of the week, they put on competitions similar to what we do here, and they do it on the stage of the Minskoff Theater. So I got to go to New York last year and watch our two performers perform on a Broadway stage, which I just thought was an incredible experience. The total scholarship amount that we've given out as of this year is uh, over $500,000. And this year we'll be giving out $100,000, plus about $20,000 in camp intensive opportunities. It's an absolutely an amazing evening. It's a truly a talent competition that brings in the best of the best from all over. Uh, we're fortunate to, enough to have Cheryl Ladd um, join our board recently, and she's going to be the host for the evening. And it's a very, very exciting night. For more information on this competition and the scholarship, you can check out their website. Next up, we head up to Wisconsin to visit with Milwaukee's Present Music Ensemble. Devoted to commissioning, creating, and recording contemporary music, they recently closed out their 32nd season with a multimedia concert titled Home Place. Present Music included people of all ages from four local communities and professional musicians from around the country to create musical and artistic works to define the concepts of home and shelter. To tell people who are not musicians that they're going to write a piece from scratch takes a lot of convincing. And this is the first time anyone's hearing, you know, any of these pieces done in this way. It's just having stuff like that happen in Milwaukee or, or anywhere is great. Present Music is a contemporary chamber music ensemble founded and based in Milwaukee. We perform works and commission music by living composers, so I tell people we fall under the classical umbrella, but it's not uncommon to see violin, piano mixed in with electric guitar or pre-recorded tracks or multimedia. Our season finale Home Place concert is about the concepts of home and place and shelter and you know, what that means to us. We have a creation project education program where we pair local composers with students in, in Milwaukee, and they have the opportunity to write and perform original music over, you know, course of a few weeks to a few months. We've been matching composers and artists with them for, for a few weeks now, and they've, they've debuted their pieces in their neighborhoods, but now they're coming together as part of Present Music's Home Place concert. So it, it'll be kind of a mix of amateurs and professional musicians, sort of looking at home on a national and global scale, but also Milwaukee as our home and, and what the sounds of each neighborhood or you know, what the feel, what the visual art sort of look like for each each neighborhood in Milwaukee. Safe and free, safe and free, in my Three of the neighborhoods uh, are, are actual songs, um, but you know, common to present music concerts, we also do lots of other different types of art forms. Sometimes we have dancers or visual artists, so we really wanted a visual art piece. The kids here at um, New Life Community Center are creating musical structures, um, musical shelters. So we're thinking about the idea of home as um, a place to be safe and then making music. So with the supplies that we have gathered, we thought about what sounds they can make. So not just a shelter, but a shelter that can make music too. The materials that we are using were donated by the Habitat for Humanity Restore. 
and then there were donated supplies by artists. You know, they, they just sort of let their imagination go. These shelters should protect, you know, something, and but they should have like a musical element, so use plastics and metals and um, wood and, and things that have sound. Seeing the supplies, the garbage that was about to be thrown away turned into something beautiful. These works inspire me. We will scatter the musical shelters as well as the um, performers from the other three neighborhoods, Harambe, Sherman Washington Park, and Burnham Park. Our present music hearing voices, which is a new music a vocal ensemble, they'll be singing songs as well. Reginald Baylor actually designed a mural uh, incorporating all of the typeface graphics, and so we'll have sort of like an interactive live painting session, so anyone in the audience is, is welcome to, you know, come and paint and, and contribute to that. And then Kevin Stahlheim picked a piece called Shelter. Um, it's composed by three American composers from Bang on a Can, and there's a video with it by Bill Morrison. And that piece um, has several movements. There's one movement titled The American Home. It's about you know home and shelter on a more like national level, as well as some music by Bryce Desner and Caroline Shaw. And then the finale will be a concoction of medleys, musical songs that Kevin Stalheim puts together um, called Home. I think it's really interesting that you know you can travel to all these places and they have different smells, different energy, different flavors, but that everybody will call, you know, this area their home. You know, it just really shows the diversity of Milwaukee. To be able to do that in a creative, innovative way with new music, visual art, collaborations is a lot of fun. We are back with Tammy Kegley. Hooray! Hello, Asia. I'm so how glad are to see you. Look at how fiesta you are. I know. It's April. It is time it's to turn the fiesta on. That's right. Take the black out. <laughs> put all the colors in. We're all good to go. We're good to go. I'm we're, never going to give up my black clothes. Well, no. We, it's okay. We can't be expected to completely <laughs> give up our black. But today, we're all things fiesta. And before we talk about all things fiesta, I really want to do a shout out for Ballet San Antonio. Went to their Balanchine Festival. They rocked it. They knocked it out of the park. So congratulations, Ballet San Antonio. Woo! Very, awesome. very happy for them. They, they need support in the community, but that's just a shout out. They're just one of the many, many wonderful arts organizations. Absolutely. So we love them. They just a big congratulations to them. Now, Fiesta Arts Fair. Yes. Fiesta Arts Fair, 18th and 19th. 42 years of doing this. Okay. It's one of, it's Southwest School of Art. I love that event. It's so fun. It is fun. It's, a, it's arts, crafts, 120 artists from all over the country. They have been juried. It's a very, very high quality fair. It's a very family friendly fair. I, that's why I love it. You, you can, can bring your kids, you can do kids activities. Absolutely. Get they, all of your Christmas presents there. Yes, you're you perfect. Can. Something for everyone. That's right. The other big fiesta event that is about the arts is King William Association. Did you know that they are the oldest uh, historic district in Texas? No! Yes, they are. And they've been running this fair since 1968. They raise tons of money. And so that money goes back into the community for at-need kids, scholarship, historic projects. They give it to arts organizations they as well. To arts. King William takes that money in and they spread it back out into the community. Such so a great it's organization. Like Dolly Levi said, you know, it's like manure. You know, it doesn't mean anything unless you spread it around. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> How did that get off track? <laughs> Just a little hello, Dolly, here. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so, absolutely, you've got to go to that on April 25th, one day only. And the Alamo Beard Club is having a contest this year. Oh, Okay. That's new at King William this year, so go onto their site to figure out how you can enter. It, it, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Both, both of these festivals are healthy and smoke-free. I love that. Yeah, that's so great. I think both of them for the first time this year, smoke-free. So Yay! go have fun doing that. Uh, tonight, there's an opening at Saladillas. It is New Works by Joseph Phillips. Cool. He is a gentleman 
uh, who is very instrumental in making art happen. He's based in Austin, but he is one of the big energies behind uh, Texas Biennial, mm. uh, behind the East Austin uh, studio tour, which has gotten huge over the years. So that'll be a, a, a great show to go see, just to see what this, this art's mind is up to. And now that we're past Contemporary Art Month, we're slowing down. There are a yes. lot of shows that are still open that you need to go check out. Some of my favorites, uh, Daniel Chadburn has a show up at Musical Bridges Around the World. Mm -hmm. The More Than Words text-based artworks at Ruiz Healy. That goes until April 25th. And then they have a show opening with Jesse Amato on the 30th. Okay. Go see that. Uh, seen and Unseen at Cinnabar over at the Blue Star mm -hmm. Complex. Great great show check that one out that one closes may 17th uh back from berlin at blue star contemporary cool. art museum through may 10th go see it if you didn't get out during contemporary art month now's the time to go back out again when when one is taking a, a break from, for fiesta from, from fiesta you got to go <laughs> see it and then last but not least uh some really great works uh, by margaret craig at rem gallery uh, the show is called ocean harvest and it is artworks that are completely composed of, of plastic. Oh, that's cool. Like, like recycled so it's stuff? It's like recycled, and it's called Ocean Harvest, and it is a beautiful show. Don't miss it. Love it. It closes go. April 24th. Go, go, go. And thank you for putting up with all the clanging and clattering and all that jazz. We're what under are we construction doing? at the play. <laughs> We're finally getting a ceiling thanks to the San Antonio City. Hooray. Oh, so, that's thanks wonderful. Thanks for putting up with us. Thanks for being here, Tammy. Congratulations, Aja. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Sounds great. You can read more from Tammy Kegley on her art blog, essay.com. your event to the Kaloran Arts Calendar, visit kaloran.org slash arts. Next up, we meet Sherry Sparkle Williams, who continues to dance after 40 years on the stage. Her star career has led to countless awards and accolades, but praise isn't what drives her. You know, dance is powerful. It can be healing. It can just say the right thing at the right time when you need it. I feel really honored and, and humbled at the same time to be able to say that. I am an ambassador for dance because I truly believe in it and it's, it's never let me down. Actually, Sherry Sparkle Williams has never let dance down. At age 52 and still dancing, she celebrates 40 years of dance with the Dayton Contemporary Dance Company. Sherry was awarded the 2014 Governor's Award for the Arts in Ohio in the Individual Artist category for excellence in her craft. The depth of the talent in Ohio is deep, and the selection process for the Governor's Award is highly competitive. Finding out that I was a recipient of this Governor's Award is annoying. I owe so much to so many because they do believe in what it is that I do. And that just makes doing what it is that I do, this dance thing, even more enjoyable. We work hard <laughs> at Dayton Contemporary Dance Company, and we play hard too. It's a great environment to be in, and I'm always touched when I find that people not only enjoy what it is that we do, but appreciate it. And this Governor's Award is an ultimate appreciation of that. Williams' dancing career began in 1973, just a few years after beginning ballet classes. I was nine years of age, and my best friend Thelma and I used to do everything together. Thelma's sister, Tammy, was a dancer with the Dayton Contemporary Dance Company, and Thelma started to take ballet classes. And she said, sure, you gotta take classes too. You know, so I'd started taking dance classes. Uh, we both started with ballet. But then within that first year, we had both enrolled in modern and jazz with Geraldine Blunden, who was the founder and director of the Dayton Contemporary Dance Company. That was uh, at the age of nine, and a few years later, I stumbled into the company, and it's all kind of a stumbling path from there. By age 12, 
Sherry was dancing with DC DC, and as she grew older and the company grew more prominent and professional in its delivery, she decided to make dance a career after graduating from high school. Discipline was instilled from day one. I've always been an athlete, so I started out with gymnastics, and my coach there was a stickler for discipline, and, and then also I started to run track. I was a sprinter, and my coach there was the same. And Geraldine, they're three of a kind. You know, I guess excellence just imparts that. We trained in New York, spent our entire summers there training with uh, notables and bringing choreographers in to create works for the company from all over, and that nurturing process uh, was something that led me off into a career uh, that was full of integrity and excellence that I try to carry through to this day. Sherry became known as Sparkle after a dancer told her backstage that she sparkled while dancing. The name Sherry Sparkle Williams soon began appearing in DC DC's domestic and international playbills. Uh, I thought, oh, that's a you know, sweet thing to hear her say. But when our next concert came around, they put Sherry Sparkle Williams in the concert uh, playbill, and you know everybody laughed about it. Oh, that's cute, that's cute. But then it ended up getting transferred to our touring copy as well, and it just ended up sticking because people started to call me that. And, mm -hmm, so it stayed. When I'm on stage, I don't really think so much about me. It's always a journey, and it's my intention during that journey to take people from what's thought of as spectating to participating, you know, taking the journey with me. In October of 2011, Sherry's journey turned dark. She suffered the first serious injury of her illustrious career. Her endurance and dedication was documented by Dayton filmmakers Julia Reichert and Stephen Bognar in an award-winning film titled Sparkle. I uh, suffered um, a hip subluxation and I wasn't thinking about would I be able to dance, but would I be able to walk, you know, that kind of thing. Going through that kind of uh, debilitating, uh, downright scary time um, makes me really appreciate this longevity, you know. My hip isn't 100% yet, but I can't complain, and I won't. Because I'm back doing what I enjoy doing, and I'm no longer afraid of being able to walk. <laughs> being able to uh, do this dance thing for so long is truly a blessing, and I appreciate it every day. I've always known that I'm blessed to be able to continue to do something I so enjoy, I love, and be surrounded by people who are amazing and, you know, all wonderful to work with. Not one to be idle, Ms. Williams' interest in health and wellness has led her to also serve as DCDC's fitness trainer, a role accepted by her peers. Dancers say they are inspired by me or they truly enjoy being able to dance with me, that kind of thing. They seem to think I'm pretty okay and I think I'm well respected. I like that. <laughs> What should people know about me? That um, I'm driven, my integrity is next to none, I am disciplined, I'm passionate, and ambitious, but not to the point of running over anybody to get there. I like this 52, and I like getting older. <laughs> there you go. We'd like to feature your art on our show. Just email us a picture, video, sound recording, whatever artwork you have created to arts at klrn.org and put the words, my art, in the subject line. Each week, we'll select a project and share it with our viewers. Next up, we sat down with Hector Galan, the producer and director of the film, Children of Giant, a powerful film exposing the events and emotions that transformed the small town of Marfa, Texas, the film site for George Stevens' epic film, Giant. Children of Giant is, uh, is, is a look back um, to 1955 when uh, the movie Giant was being filmed in Marfa, Texas. And what drew me to, to that, this particular story, Children of Giant, is what George Stevens, the director of 
the original Giant was doing and did with Edna Ferber's controversial novel Giant. You know, he adapted the screenplay from that. But it's one of the very first films that really looked at what was happening uh, to Mexican Americans in the mid 50s. This documentary that, that Children of Giant looks at that, you know, and, and it, it's much bigger though because it also looks at, at class struggles, at early feminism. I don't think Children of Giant would have been shown anyplace else. And it's not because it's less quality or anything like that. If anything, PBS programs the highest quality of programming. And I'm, I'm proud to be part of that family. And that wraps it up for this edition of Arts. Next week, we'll have more Fiesta fun, so join us. But be safe in the meantime. Until next week, I'm Asia Sherevino. We'll see you then. Arts is made possible by viewers like you. Arts is presented by the Tobin Center for the Performing Arts, providing the best place anywhere to see and hear a live performance, transforming the performing arts in San Antonio's decade of downtown. The Tobin Center.